to play up here. Just the beard. <laughs> <laughs> You guys have uh, like really leaned heavily on eleven personnel the last couple of weeks. Just curious, mm -hmm. like what you like about that, like how that came about. Um, yeah, you know, I think just as the weeks go on, um, you evaluate the personnel that you think give you an advantage in, the, in each game plan. And uh, you know, for the past couple of weeks, it's it's been that way. So we've kind of been riding that, and guys have been doing a good job executing. Mike, uh, obviously, this game doesn't mean anything for the standings and you know in the playoffs you're going to play one of two teams right the Vikings or the Niners so do you, have you guys been I know you have fresh Vikings film but have you been doing any <clears throat> prep work at all on them and or the Niners knowing that the realities of the situation no full steam ahead on getting prepped and ready for, for the Eagles and, and why is that since the game is because that's this week's what's um, what's most important make sure our guys are ready to go Mike you have an unheralded group of wide receivers. Can you just talk about the work that Richie, Darius, and, uh, and Isaiah have done? Like, yeah, they've done they've done a tremendous job. Um, you know, being in the right spot, executing, playing really hard in both the run and the pass game. Um, their detail guys are smart guys that you really trust that are dependable and tough. And so, um, and, and Coach Grow does a good job, really, not just with those three guys, but you know, it's been a bunch of a bunch of guys that have contributed. In that area too, so I mean, I'm, I'm proud of that group. They've done a nice job. Mike, but where's where's Daniel grown or, or shown the most progress in your mind this season? Yeah, I mean, Daniel's Daniel's done a good job of really executing the offense, um, getting the guys getting the guys together, and you know, there's been a couple of new faces in the huddle, you know, throughout the throughout the season. And I think he's managed that well and gotten everyone on the same page and, and led that group. You know, being a captain, I think that's that's important, and, and he's done a really good job of that. I'm proud of, of proud of what he's done there. Mike, how, much, how much do you believe in sort of the rest versus momentum, whether, you know, guys playing? If it's like if they take a week off, how much do you feel like, you know, you kind of have to get it back going again you know, the following my, week? My, my philosophy on that mirrors Dave's philosophy and just getting, getting the guys ready to go this week. And, uh, you know, we'll let Dave's um, handle that uh, at the end of the week. How would you, you, you went through this with Andy several times, but yeah. how would you describe what his philosophy was on, yeah. on that situation? Well, I, I probably wouldn't speak for Coach Reed on, on his philosophy of it, but I know what we're doing here um, and how Dave's wants to handle it is how Dave's wants to handle it. That's what we'll fully support. He was big into, you know, wrestling guys. That's always kind of been his lean. Uh, what did you see coming out of that the few times that you guys did do that? Uh, you know, what you guys, yeah. they basically didn't play at the end of the season, then you, you yeah, know, we you go know, off or whatever. I think that's, for me, that's just so far in the past. I'm just so focused on this week in practice and getting our guys ready to play. Mike, uh, I think this stat is 20, 21 teams have had to start their backup quarterback or their third string quarterback mm -hmm. or both, I guess, at some point this year. How fortunate are you guys to have Tyrod? Yeah, absolutely. Tyrod's a great piece to that quarterback room. He contributes a lot, helps helps everybody, not, not just the not just the players, but the coaches as well. And you know, I find myself leaning on him and his experience. And you know, he's seen a lot of football and played a lot of football, so he's a great asset to have and a guy that you um, that you really cherish in the quarterback room and on the team. And then the flip side of that is Daniel's one of the, I guess it's eleven who hasn't missed the start. Uh, and that was a big knock on him before you got here was his durability. What have you seen from him in terms of keeping himself on the field? Uh, Daniel does all the right things on the field, off the field, prepping his body. I mean, he spends a bunch of time doing that type of stuff and, you know, kind of the, the prehab for, um, you know, those soft tissue things and um, just the kind of the normal aches and pains of a of football season. So he does a good job of taking care of it. And then on the field, obviously protecting himself getting up and out of bounds and, and sliding and doing those type of things that also, I think, helped. Would you like to see him do a little more of that, <laughs> sliding, <laughs> getting out of bounds? Yeah, I mean, I think he's got to make he's got to make the decision. And I think, you know, he's a tough kid, so he's not going to shy away from contact, number one. But um, I think, you know, he's done a good job of taking care of himself and not putting himself in those those tough situations. Is Would you rather not see him throw shoulders at linebackers? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I, th I know the one you're referencing, that was a, that was a third down. Um, in Minnesota, and I, I thought it was a it was a tough play, and got got us an extra yard to get us into a fourth and manageable. Just to follow up on that, is that something you're kind of telling him during the game? Like especially on Sunday, he took a lot of contact when you guys had a No, he's just playing football. He's a football player, and he's uh, he's a tough kid, and you know he's gonna, he's going to want to play as hard as he can, 
And I think I think he's gotten again. I think he's gotten better at just being smart with where, where the contact is. He sometimes he gets up and out. Sometimes he lowers his shoulder. Sometimes he slides. So I think you know he's got to be smart, smart football player, and he is. And I think he's made good decisions there. Bellinger's skill set seems like, especially when you get to the fringe and the red zone, mm-hmm. the play you had last week with him in the backfield. Yeah. It it seems to to have that position for a tight end, but also a guy who can play in the backfield puts a lot more pressure on the defense. Yeah. Um, is that something do you think, since he's come back, that you've been able to kind of get back to where, where really it seemed like you had been getting to that point mm-hmm. when he had gotten hurt? Yeah, it, it certainly adds some flexibility to your run game, to your pass game, to kind of have, um, to kind of be able to do some of that stuff on the backfield. It's a, it's a those, those schemes that we've done have been kind of cool. And, um, you know, I, I've obviously liked them because you can influence that second level, getting those guys to step up and he kind of slips them. So, I think it's it's been it's been a, a good uh, a good piece of the offense. Not to ask you the secrets to those plays, mm-hmm. but just the idea of when you're influencing the second level, mm-hmm. that also factors into the run game. I would imagine with yeah. Saquon building off of that. Absolutely, right? absolutely. It's one of those complementary plays that that we look at each week. You know, whether it's backfield or we split out tight, like all those things kind of tie into it. And uh, and Belly's done a great job of of kind of making sure he ties in both the run and the pass. Mike, is that part of what you're trying to do? Is build one play off of another, or, and and where did you actually learn that from? Mm-hmm. Um, I think you know each each week you go in trying to find just the best plays versus the scheme, and then when you look at a play, you are how can they defend it? What kind of what what can they you know how, what can they present that could give this certain play issues? And so you kind of want to try and build plays off of that to kind of counteract what they may may or may not do, um, and kind of have them in your back pocket for. All right, they're doing X, Y, or Z. Let's you know, let's jump into this next, you know, in the next drive or next series. So you, you kind of look at that really for all the run game, pass game, and try and you know complement all the stuff on top of putting the guys in certain spots. And um, you know that's really a, a lot of a lot of time is spent on it. What do you view as, What do you view as Davis Webb's strength? Strengths as a player, and how has he contributed yeah. to your guys' team this year behind the scenes? I mean, I, th- I thought I thought you saw it in the preseason. He's done a nice job there, um, getting the ball out of his hands, really taking control of the offense. I mean, he has a, such a great demeanor in the huddle. Um, he has a great demeanor, you know, on the field and in and, and command of the offense. I think those are some of his his biggest his biggest attributes for sure. Mike, from your standpoint, what what's the key? What has been the key to Saquon having what now his mm-hmm. best season in terms of rushing yards yeah. here? Well, I think, you know, and I'm sure Saquon would say the same thing, but it's, you know, on offense, it's a love man operation. And the, the guys up front, starts up front, those guys got to set the tempo. And then Saquon's going to feed off of them and work off of them. And, you know, I think Saquon's doing a good job of, of trusting himself and trusting his eyes, trusting his landmarks and all the fundamental and techniques that we talk about. I think that's what you're seeing. And obviously, he's, he's, um, he's a talented player, so he gets out in space and he makes plays in space like we expect him to. What is um, what is particularly valuable about Feliciano? Mm-hmm. You know, he came here this year new. Uh, what has he given you guys uniquely at center? Yeah, from from the day he got here, obviously he he knows he had a lot of experience with the offense, and I think he's even taken that to another level um, as far as being kind of a leader of that group and uh, a veteran of that group that that can kind of get everyone going in the right direction. So Felice is one of those guys that you you lean on to kind of get it going. He's he's a tough kid. He's competitive. And that's what you love about Felice. He's going to go in there and compete and, um, and, and play his butt off.